I propose to you to focus on the human land use as main factor of change near the Lake Coronas and to uh, the Azigonia pit bog from the Minoan period to present day. And uh, to introduce the question of the complex relationship between human and natural coevolution in the Mediterranean landscape, just uh, to some word about the specificity of Mediterranean, which has a sensitive ecosystem that are treated by ongoing global change, a rich human history, and emblematic land uses, we talk about uh, from this morning, a word like pastoralism, olive cultivation, and practices such as burning and terraces. And uh, uh, the specificity of Crete is that we have all this uh, condition of the miniature uh, on one island in the Eastern Mediterranean basin. So just uh, to remind about the archives, the natural, continental natural archives Boris told you just uh, before, uh, two rare and vi valuable continental um, archives, the Kournas Lake and the Azegonia pit bog. Um, the Kournas Lake is the only natural uh, lake um, in, the, in Crete. Uh, just a few, few words about this lake uh, Boris just told you about uh, to say that we have a master curve of 50 meters long that documents uh, 9,500 years of paleoecological history. Uh, that means time lapse between late Mesolithic and present day. The Azigonia pit bog, some words more about uh, this site. Uh, it is a small size pit deposit, not allocated in an open mountain landscape. Uh, and it is probably at that time the southernmost known pit bog in uh, Europe. Previous study, as Boris uh, told about, uh, uh, highlighted the great interest of this site. And uh, the we performed in 2011, uh, permit to have a core uh, from almost six meter long and uh, with a robust edge model. And uh, it reveals a potential of 2000 years of high resolution paleological history. So in the, with this archives, we can document 7,000 years of socio-ecosystem construction, of course with only 2,000 years in the White Mountain, fortunately, and uh, three main phases in this um, construction can be distinguished. Um, the first one only here in Kornas and the two second on both sides. The first one, we know Ian, Boris has told about uh, the specificity of this period, but we will a little bit detailed and focus. Um, it is, uh, in fact, uh, it is characterized by a sustainable and long lasting as agro pastoral phase, mixing olive tree um, presence, cultivation, pastoralism did by coprophilus fungi, also crops and a regular fire regime. Um, as we have seen, this uh, sustainable agropastoral phases had its origin in the final Neolithic. And uh, we have seen this morning that uh, it's not um, unique here. And um, almost already published um, work at uh, Palais Castro of, uh, oh, um, sorry, Five Stones. Uh, I've shown this on Arthur 
uh, at Malia this morning as well. And uh, this sustainable and long lasting agropastoral phase led to stable high biodiversity. Um, olive exploitation for this uh, period of uh, Minoian is uh, well known from archaeological knowledge um, related to oil production, for, for example, and the use of oil lamps. Uh, in addition with uh, all the, our colleagues talk about this morning. Um, so, during mid and late Minoian period, this stability knows some trouble. Archaeological context gives uh, information about troubles as well. It is a period of palace destruction. And in the pollen diagram, it is characterized by a huge change in the forested, uh, in the woodland, with the change uh, between Quercus deciduous that increased sharply, while Quercus evergreen here in my green decrease. This phase uh, is um, also characterized but no fire and no grazing indicators. Uh, maybe this could be the um, result of a period of earthquake and other troubles, socioeconomical. And uh, it, occur, it caused local agropastoral decline, but olive um, pollen is more important at that time. Maybe the continued olive cultivation is here an exception. And uh, what about the impact, local impact of Santorini eruption? Boris told you about the tephra layer that is um, present in the sediments of Kournas and um, uh, cryptotrif tephra, sorry, that caps a mass wasting deposit. Um, sorry, no, no problem. I hear something that you hear me. Yes, yes, it, it was just some perturbation. <laughs> okay, no problem. Thank you. Um, so, uh, about the tephra, yes, that is perceptible. Um, so, the tephra cap, that caps a mass wasting deposit, but not tsunami in evidence in the lake. But at that time, many change in the pollen and non-pollen um, diagram of the lake with a decrease of olive cultivation that is related to an increase in agropastoral crop indicators and uh, coprophilus fungal spore and again fire. Um, this could uh, illustrate a change in agropastoral practices. Um, the Santorini Egyptian may have uh, provoked um, a more humid uh, climate that have damaged olive trees. That was um, evoked by um, publication of Pierce Metal in 2009. Um, based on triering analysis, and as well as by Riley in 2012, um, following uh, archaeological evidences. And this morning, our colleague from uh, Malia uh, showed the, the same process. The second phase con concerns the Hellenistic Roman and Byzantine period from the 3rd to the 9th century of the Common Era. Um, just some word about uh, just what happened before this period. 
After the decline of the early Iron Age, the archaic classic Greek periods show a major uh, increase in the sediment accumulation, accumulation rate, sorry, and led to a rapid accumulation of uh, material. Um, this process was detailed by Boris. And um, we can see here that uh, uh, it caused um, probably an eutrophication of the lake and uh, increase um, that was um, that lake where uh, nutrient input increased. Um, during this period, uh, there is a strong um, increase in uh, grazing pressure on fire and the beginning of an increase in olea that is sharp as well. So the characteristic of this period of Hellenistic and uh, Roman and Byzantine near the lowland um, of Cournes Lake is a decrease after the strong increase, an increase, a regular during uh, the period of erosion, a moderate fire regime phase, but uh, decreasing racing indicators, even if they remain important, a decrease in biodiversity, and a sharp and long-lasting increase and high level of olea um, with uh, up to 50% of olea pollen. Um, just to highlight, um, what happened at the same time in the White Mountains? Here, the um, peat accumulation just began during the first century BC. Um, the first uh, study in, by Atherton and Al in 2003, uh, they um, evocate the seismic origin because of the date of the um, onset of the peat in their core. But, uh, and it corresponds to a seismic period named the Byzantine uh, paroxysm. Um, it was uh, perfectly, it makes sense, but with the longer core, um, the seismic origin was no more um, accurate. And uh, the, this new core, our new core, show that um, <clears throat> the onset began in a period where the human impact, especially grazing and burning, were very strong from the beginning of the sequence. Um, so the, the high amount of coprophilus fungal spores all over this uh, core, and especially in the deepest part, um, led us to undertake an innovating study of parasite eggs all along the core. Uh, it was a new and exploratory analysis usually made in archaeological contexts. And even on small samples, they gave results that were published in Rochetal. And uh, it highlights the presence of parasites of um, ruminant, but of pigs at the beginning. And um, in the environment of uh, the Azigonia pig bug on, on field, but uh, as well on um, aerial image, we can see numerous undated remains of human construction on uh, the watershed, uh, such as, for example, this uh, big maple uh, comfortably on uh, a wall, an old wall, or like strange, very straight uh, limit on aerial photos. All this um, fact led us to propose the hypothesis that the Azigonia Pittsburgh origin could be a human-induced origin, um, human um, 
activity in the mountain may have changed hydrological um, change. Uh, so, for this period, we have seen that in the White Mountains, it's characterized by pastoralism, and in the lowland, that only grows along the lake. And uh, for both, the beginning of this period is a period of intensive soil management that led to watershed stabilization at term. Uh, maybe originating a pit bog in the mountain and uh, here in near Cornell's Lake, making that erosion will be much less after this period. Uh, in near Cornell's Lake, we can see that the intensive land use and uh, mainly focused on olive trees maintain low biodiversity. Um, at the end of this period, uh, a same, um, a comparable, not the same, a comparable degrees of land use um, characterize the sixth century of the common era with a sharp decrease in coprophilus, uh, sorry, in coprophilus fungal spore in the mountain and in oleapollen in the lowland near Cornas. Um, we know that the histor his sorry, histor historical context uh, is the one of the Justinian plague with a um, strong population and um, um, the period of a lot of uh, Saracen incursions in the land, Saracen raids. So the third phase lasted from the Saracen to uh, conquest to present day. And during this phase, the Mediterranean forest decreased uh, favoring either maki in the mountain and herbaceous cover in the lowland and uh, to uh, favoring her um, higher biodiversity. Fire regime is almost absent in the last five century in both sites. The difference in the land uses is that in the lowland, the, the Venetian period is characterized by low indication of olive, olive cultivations. Crop and grassing are very low as well. That favors again the increase in biodiversity. What is zone less attractive or dedicated to wood resources or other cultivation? We know that the uh, Venetian administration favored wine production in Crete. Um, here, the pollen diagram to illustrate the problem with uh, wine cultivation uh, and Cornas Lake that is uh, surrounded by wild vitis, all the water accounts we have um, pollen of vitis, and it's really difficult to uh, interpret only on pollen evidences. They speak on uh, vitis pollen during Venetian period. Other cultivation can be evoked, such as uh, Styrax officinalis, that is a cosmetic or a pharmacology use, and uh, that increased during this period as well. Um, during the following period of Turkish uh, administration, uh, olive cultivation increases again, while other indicators remain low here. Um, we know that uh, olive production is, was favored by Turkish administration for soap factories. At the end of the sequence, this intensive, the present day intensive olive cultivation provoke again a decrease of biodiversity. In the White Mountain, the human impact is high all over the period. Uh, 
and we can see C with high um, indicator of pastoralism and other anthropogenic indicators as well. Uh, during the Venetian period, um, it is worth mentioning that an event uh, appeared with a short, and la uh, short but large magnitude event um, illustrated by a sharp increase in maki species, especially either, and uh, um, something that looked like land abandonment and uh, peat accumulation rate increase. We are in the years of the Black Death impact and again with a uh, lot of uh, depopulation. No, maybe an impact of this uh, pandemic history. To the more recent day, uh, at the end of the twin, um, sorry, seventh, 17th century to the mid 19th century, the decrease of agropastoral indicators is uh, related um, to an increase uh, important of uh, frigana that uh, prevailed today locally, and that is um, palynologically indicated by the presence of sarcopotherium spinosum. So, to conclude about uh, the socio-ecosystem dynamics and human land use, we have seen that Kornas and Azigonia cores provided novel insights into the timing and nature of vegetation, biodiversity, fire, land use, and environmental shifts. The three main phases of human land use uh, have been recognized for the 7,000 years. Um, only the, fir the first one is only documented near Cornes Lake, but there are no linear processes. Among the traditional Mediterranean land uses, olive cultivation played a major role at Cornes and pastoralism at Azigonia. In the lowlands, such as in the White Mountains, changing land use and other successive political and economic influences led to the major changes. But permit it all with the resilient vegetation to shift back to higher diversity again. Uh, it is worth mentioning that the intensive olive cultivation for Hellenistic Roman and Byzantine period uh, really looks like um, the modern impact of biodiversity. And finally, during the past um, hundred years, biodiversity markedly declined, probably in response to the industrialization of agriculture near Coronas and overgrazing together with spring capture uh, near Azigonia. And some perspective uh, to follow this. Uh, question and uh, to challenge the question to understand uh, better the process that lead to the main changes. We have here long-term and high-resolution data at local scale. We compared or tried to compare two local registration. Uh, this um, course and their multi-proxy analysis and reached an already valuable data set of paleological data. We have seen this morning some and we will see other this afternoon. But we have a lack locally of comparable archaeological, archaeobotanical and historical data for both these sites. And the uh, local paleoclimatic independence record as well. And just to finish this presentation, um, I will show you this shame recently published by the Groot et al. to illustrate this uh, balance, rarely achieved and difficult to obtain, um, between comparable data sets concerning climate change, regional environment, and society, uh, a balance that environmentalists, archaeologists, and archaeobotanists would like to reach, as Maya told us in, in 
her um, introductive talk this morning. So I thank you for your attention and one again for your invitation to participate to this workshop. <laughs>